Ugh. I make the worst tea and coffee. <laughs> <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> My name's uh, Wendy Keir and I'm known as the Queen of Twitter. I'm known as the Queen of Twitter and I always feel that I have to explain this story because people within my own community with inside Twitter started calling me the Queen of Twitter. So I actually wear my crown very proudly. The main symptoms of my dyslexia are, um, I don't do maths, forget maths, it doesn't happen. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> uh, yeah, maths is a nightmare. Um, I don't like reading large amounts of information. Memory, definitely. So when I do talks, when I do public speaking, it's I, I'm not joking. People will laugh when they hear this. I have to, for an hour's talk, rehearse for about an hour every day for about a week before I do the talk. And that is an incredible amount of pressure and stress just, just to deliver a talk. My memory is really good for some things, but not good for massive amounts of data. I think that's probably why I like Twitter so much, because it's very short bursts of information. And it's also about connections as well. I'm really good at connecting people together in terms of thinking about who needs what. So the business is um, totally focused around Twitter and it's how businesses can effectively use Twitter for their business. Twitter really suits my learning style. So I really like short bits of information. I don't like sheets and sheets of text, which is probably the dyslexia. In Twitter, because people are making recommendations, that lead's already hot. So they will purchase purely off the fact of the recommendation from within inside Twitter, which is really interesting. Mm. So they've missed all of that other stuff that businesses are spending hundreds of thousands of pounds on. For Twitter to really work, you've got to understand how a community operates and how a community operates with inside Twitter. And that's where businesses go wrong because they just think, I call it dumping and running, so they just dump their marketing messages in there or their information and then they think the magic's going to happen. And it's not. What I'm really good at is just picking out the bits that are really important for Twitter rather than giving the whole lot. I remember what people's needs are, which is really weird. It's almost like a sixth sense, and I think that's got to do with the dyslexia, because I read people. That's probably why I do so well for businesses with inside Twitter. It's because I can see those, I can actually see the connections happening on the, on the screen, and I can see when people need something just from looking at the screen. I haven't really mapped out my career path. I've just fallen in, I've fallen in and out of things, I think. Maybe a lot of dyslexics would do that because it's quite tough being dyslexic and working within companies unless they're really, really good. This is probably the first job I've actually enjoyed and taken seriously and really gotten into. I started using Twitter three years ago and um, that was for my own business at the time and people kept saying to me, you're really good at this, you should, tra you should do training and consultation. I was a bit frightened because the dyslexia I felt at the time really hindered me because I was frightened to um, go and do the training because I'd have to stand up and write. So what I did instead was I started ghost tweeting on behalf of other businesses rather than doing the training and the consultation. And what happened is I learnt how Twitter really works for a business and how to represent a business online. So. I had to go on a bit of a journey with my dyslexia to be able to reach a point where I felt comfortable that I could actually go in and not be frightened to say, um, oh, by, by the way, I'm dyslexia, can you write on the board for me? Because you won't be able to read my handwriting. I think there are lots of dyslexic entrepreneurs on Twitter. Um, I think the thing is whether, I should imagine there's loads, it's just whether people have actually got it in their bio or not. Some people are really brave and courageous and they'll have dyslexia or dyslexic in their bio or dyspraxic. Um, but I'm not, quite, I'm not quite brave enough to do that. It's difficult, isn't it? Because some, some people would be attracted to it and other people would just be completely turned off by it. I think people think, oh, you're going to start your business, oh, you're going to get loads of money. My business plan when I first did it was like, oh, I'd have so many clients a week and then the reality sets in and it's a bit of a different story. Running your own business is hard. My God, is it hard work. It's 
unbelievably hard work. I can only I can only think that as you keep learning and you keep learning more, that you get better, and you have to find your way around things. So if it doesn't work, you have to find another way to do it. Dyslexia, I think, definitely does that. It definitely makes you more resilient. So um, rather than writing report, I do a video. I think one of the things is you need to get a really good support network of people that not only understand your dyslexia but also understand you on an emotional level because sometimes you can obviously be oversensitive and you really need people to balance out. If they know you they'll be able to balance out how you're feeling so you don't so you don't overreact. They can check your work um, and I think if you can be honest with people, with clients, be honest with them whenever you can because it just takes away some of that stress. So if you make a mistake, they'll have a basic understanding of why you've made it. So it just relieves some of them, the tension and the stress that you can experience from having dyslexia. And also, don't have too much stress because um, your dyslexia gets worse. <laughs> so map out when's going to be your most stressful points in the month or the week and make sure you haven't got too many areas of stress all in one go.